Hi everyone and welcome to a series of videos for people interested in getting hands-on with Data Cloud. My name's Dave Norris and in this video we're going to be building out a use case to allow us to capture interactions from an existing website. And we're using a fictitious hotel chain called Coral Cloud Resorts to do that. In this video specifically we'll be adding the interactions SDK, capturing consent, and then building up a profile by capturing the identity of the user after they sign into the website. Now we are building on a series of videos, so if you're interested in the playlist, check out the link in the description. So let's get started by taking a look at Coral Cloud Resort's existing website. The existing website is built with Next.js and TypeScript and has a nice homepage with featured experiences running across the resorts. Users can search for available rooms, select a room, and then make a booking. And it's really these featured experiences on the homepage that we want to start tracking when people are interacting with them. The website also has a privacy banner at the bottom so users can manage their cookie preferences and the ability to sign in at the top to interact with their previous bookings and their membership points. So let's have a look at how we can augment this website with the Interactions SDK. Now there are a few different ways of using the Interactions SDK. I've linked to the documentation above. We're using a way that gives us a little bit of control programmatically. And to break down the build, we'll do it in three steps. Step one, we're gonna initialize the SDK. Step two, we're gonna capture consent. And in step three, we'll capture the identity of the user after they sign in to the web page. So let's get started with step one and look at how we initialize the SDK. The first thing we're gonna do is get the interactions SDK from Data Cloud. So we're gonna to go to the Data Cloud setup. We'll head to website and mobile apps. And then we'll have a look at the existing connector we set up in a previous video. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can see a script to add to our source code. And this is the core script that's gonna allow us to interact with Data Cloud and Salesforce personalization. So we're gonna copy this ready to add into our code base. On Coral Cloud's website, the first thing they did was to use the Interactions SDK link that they got from the Data Cloud setup earlier. Now we have the reference for the Interactions SDK. Let's look at the documentation to see what the initialization method looks like. This method is the entry point for initializing the Interactions SDK on your website. And its primary purpose is to configure the SDK with everything it needs before it starts tracking user activity. It has two key parameters. Consents, which is required, and that's an array, or at least a promise that resolves to an array of consent objects. And that's crucial for handling user privacy and consent management, and it's why Coral Cloud had a privacy banner on their homepage. And the second parameter, which is optional, is the cookie domain. And that specifies the domain for the first party cookies that the SDK uses to store identity data. And it's gonna to default to the current site's domain if we don't provide it. And here you can see this is where they call the init method for the Salesforce Interactions SDK. And they're passing in a consents array and optionally a cookie domain. Then they've decided to output to the console log, the fact that they've hit step one in our case, that they've initialized the interactions SDK. We've initialized the SDK. Let's look at how we capture consent, because at this stage, we may have initialized the SDK, but we haven't actually captured consent from the user yet. Moving back into the website, what we're trying to do is tie in when anyone opts in for us to customize their experience for things like room recommendations and tailored experiences, that's when we want to update the interactions SDK to say that the user has now opted in. Thankfully, there is a method in the interactions SDK to help. That's the update consents method. So let's have a look at the documentation first. The update consents method is designed to dynamically change the user's consent preferences after the SDK has already been initialized. Coral Cloud have decided to initialize the SDK when the page loads. At that stage, the consents array might be empty if the user has not already opted in. So they'll use the update consents method to pass in a new consents array. And the consents array has a number of consent objects. And they have three things I need to provide, which is the provider, the name of the consent management provider, 
the purpose, which is the specific category of tracking the user is consenting to, and then the status, the fact that they have opted in. So let's see how we've implemented this on the website. Back in the code base, we can see our original call to the init method, where we'll output the fact that we're at step one, but at this stage, the consents array will be empty. So when someone interacts with the privacy banner, we can then update the consents array with the provider, the purpose, and the status. And then if the SDK is already initialized, we'll use the update consents method passing in the newly populated array. And when that happens, we want to output some information to the log. So we'll say we're at step two, that we've updated the consents. So we're making good progress. We've initialized the SDK. We're updating consent, and that's important because without that, any events I send into Data Cloud will be ignored. So we need to opt in. Once we've done those two steps, we can then start capturing the interactions on the website. But we do need to talk a little bit about identity because right now, if I did that, they would be associated to an unknown profile. So how do we eventually start tying interactions I'm having on the website to a known user. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the identity event in the interactions SDK. And we're going to tie that to our sign in button on the website. So let's take a look at what I mean. So the identity event in the interactions SDK really serves as a bridge between people anonymously browsing Coral Cloud's website and then being able to link them to a known guest record after they sign in. It has some key attributes, the event type, which will always be identity, is anonymous, which zero indicates that they are a known user, and then some attributes that can identify the guest based on other data in their enterprise. Now, in a previous video, we've already set up an identity resolution rule set in Data Cloud that looks at name and email. So in our case, we'll use email, first name, and last name, but you can use other identifying information in your use cases. So things like membership number, for example. In the website, we're using a user agent OAuth flow and Salesforce as the identity provider. And this allows us then to send an event to Data Cloud. And here you can see we're using the send event method, passing in identity as our event type, and then attributes of the guest. And then we're outputting the fact we're at step three, that we've sent an identity event and outputting in our case, Sophia Rodriguez's email address, because that's the guest we'll be using for our example, that also follows on from the previous videos. So this event is crucial because it really helps Data Cloud tie an anonymous ID, which the SDK creates for us automatically, to a known user or guest after they use the sign in button. Now, the best way for me to really demonstrate what's going on behind the scenes is using a diagram. So let's take a step back and walk through what's happening. In previous videos, this is the diagram we used to talk about identity resolution. On the left-hand side, these are the original data sources we have used previously, namely Service Cloud and Amazon S3. And when I'm ingesting information about people, we mapped to an individual data model object, which created two records in that use case. So identity resolution, is really the ability to set up these matching rules. And we used first name, last name, and email previously to look through the individual data model object and find records that match that criteria. When it finds one, it will create a unified individual and then link that back to the original records via a link object. So the website really just becomes another source of data. The identifier for people on a website or the website users is the device ID. We are still, via the website connector, creating a data lake object for an identity record and then mapping that to the individual data model object. Once the identity resolution job runs and matches on first name, last name, and email, because all three data sources match, it will link the website to the existing unified individual record for Sophia Rodriguez. And this is really powerful because I can now federate a query across any of those connected data sources. Could be cases in Service Cloud, reservations in Amazon S3, or now engagement data on the website. Now, one new feature of Data Cloud we can take advantage of for our website use case 
is we now don't have to wait once every 24 hours for this identity resolution job to run. We can have it happen in real time, but to do that, we do need to make a slight adjustment to our existing identity resolution job, and that's to make sure we're using exact or exact normalized matches for name and email address. Just to be clear, if I head to the identity resolutions tab in Data Cloud, I can show you what I mean. I'll open up an existing rule set and edit the match rules. After I click next, I can edit the match rules. And really what I'm checking is I've updated the match method on each of my fields to be exact or exact normalized. Okay, so let's look at this process end to end. Let's open up the website with DevTools to look at the output of the console log statements and then move into Data Cloud to query the underlying data structures to see what's happening under the covers. Okay, so back on the website, I've just refreshed the page and opened up DevTools. The first thing you'll see is the fact that we've initialized the SDK and that the consents array at the moment is empty. I've also enabled debug. So one tip I have, if you're using Interactions SDK for the first time, set debug mode because then it will output these debug statements for you so you can see what's happening behind the scenes. That's important because you can see what's actually being sent to Data Cloud. So if I expand what's being sent when I initialize the SDK, you can see the consents array is empty, but you can also see that it's automatically created an anonymous ID for the person browsing Coral Cloud's website. Nothing else has happened yet. Next thing we need to do is just accept all for cookies. Scroll down and we can see now that we've completed step two, that we've updated the consent, so we've opted in. The next thing we can do is sign in. This is gonna use a standard OAuth flow. We're gonna log in a guest called Sophia Rodriguez. So again, you can see step three, we sent the identity event for Sophia Rodriguez, and then the debug from the interactions SDK shows us what was sent to Data Cloud. And note that the anonymous ID that we, we saw earlier when we initialized the SDK now becomes the device ID. And that's what we're mapping to the individual ID in Data Cloud that we covered in an earlier video. And then we can see we pass in the identifying attributes of the person, name, and email. Okay, so let's move into Data Cloud and query the underlying data model object so you can see how this data has been ingested and then mapped to the standard Customer 360 data model. Back in Data Cloud, I'm using Query Editor here to write some SQL to query the underlying tables. If my identity event is being mapped correctly, I should be able to query the individual data model object for Sofia Rodriguez's profile and find three matches in previous videos, we ingested a profile from Service Cloud and from Amazon S3. And now we've sent the identity event. We've got a third profile from the website and it uses the device ID as the individual ID. So any interactions I have on the website using that session will now be attributed to Sophia Rodriguez. So in our identity resolution diagram, we've just executed a query against the individual data model object, and we can see the three individual profiles inside. To check our real-time identity resolution job has run correctly, we're now gonna query the unified link and unified individual data model objects. And we're gonna use the device ID to check that it's correctly identified the website profile as being linked to the existing unified profile for Sophia Rodriguez. Back in Query Editor in Data Cloud, I have a new SQL query that's joining the individual data model object to the unified individual data model object via its link counterpart. And we're using the device ID to look for a match in the link table. So when we run this query, we can see that we're outputting the unified profile for Sophia Rodriguez. So not three records anymore, just one and we can see that it's found a match in the linkage table using the device ID that came from the website. And that's it for today's video. We've really created the foundations to work with the Interactions SDK for Coral Cloud. We initialized the SDK, we captured consent, and then we sent an identity event. We then looked under the covers to see how the identity event helps tie unknown browsing 
to a known guest profile. In the next video, we're going to layer on top capturing the interactions with specific assets, and we'll use those featured experiences on the home page as our example. And then we'll show you how to use data graphs to federate queries across any connected data sources. And we now have three, Service Cloud, Amazon S3, and now we have the website. So if you like videos like this, don't forget to give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Salesforce Developer YouTube channel for more content like this one.